Hey guys, Matt Craig here, co-founder of Persuasion Experience. Today, we have an awesome video. I got like quizzed and a little bit interrogated by my good friend, Michael Natalin from Market Lead. And Michael and I, we had a great discussion on B2C marketing and what it truly takes to stand out, get attention, and most importantly, convert that attention into leads and new customers and clients. So in this video, we talk about the top mistakes to avoid, as well as some actual strategies that you can deploy in your B2C marketing campaigns right now to get more conversions and get more clients coming through. So I hope you enjoy this video and if you do like it, give us a like, give us a subscribe and we'll catch you on the next video. Cheers. Excellent, so we're back. So this is part two where we're talking about lead generation, but rather than just talking about lead generation and optimizing conversion rate optimization for lead generation, we're gonna do two segments now. One for B2C, so business to consumer, and then one for B2B. So a lot of people and content out there does lump it down into just like lead generation or econ. We want to go a bit deeper because Matt and I have worked on, well, Matt's worked on hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of landing pages and funnels for lead generation. And I've done, I think, over six to 700 on Google Ads. So for us, we've got such an in-depth experience that we just can't even lump it just to like lead generation for us it actually goes much deeper but we're just going to make it split it into two and this one will be on uh the b2c lead generation so we've got matt here again expert persuasion experience legend and i wanted to ask him the biggest questions uh around this stuff and we're just going to segment it down into two things once again one the biggest mistakes and two the most practical things you can implement today uh, because a lot of people who are watching this who reach out to me, uh, the issues they're mentioning to me in the Google Ads account are super real. Like a lot of them are either being mismanaged or just not managed properly. But then the bigger issue I see is they're going to website and pages that are just horrible. And usually when I can audit it, just with my experience, I can find things. But usually I throw these accounts over to Matt and be like, what do you think the issues Help are me. here? And I get like a spreadsheet this long. And I was like, okay, mate, we need to make it more simple because they're not going to fix everything. So uh, I just wanted to start this conversation again with Matt and just like, you know, Matt is an expert here. He worked in the King Kong. He's running his own amazing company at the moment with amazing clients. We collab on a lot of work together. And I see firsthand that he can take clients from that I'm running from like a two to three percent uh, conversion rate immediately to like twelve to fifteen percent, which is significant. And even the other day, Matt, you were telling me about like some a client that what was it? You got their conversion rate from 0.5 percent to eight percent, and their yeah. cost per lead went down from three fifty to thirty dollars. And that's like not just like oh, that was one day or one week or one month. This has been consistent. So like. I just wanted to really start this conversation again and just keep his value going. So firstly, actually, maybe you start with that. Tell me what you did for that client. Yeah, so we looked at all the options out there in the marketplace and they unfortunately had to go through the iOS updates recently, which just absolutely decimated their business. And they'd also changed over to a subscription model. So it's B2C, B2 um, it's a subscription plus like an e-commerce play for this business. And essentially um, what we've done is we've just sort of tweaked the messaging. Um, we've kept sort of like the pricing the same, but instead we've increased the actual subscription price, which we, <laughs> which is like the opposite of what you would naturally think. It's like, okay, if we want more conversions, let's decrease the subscription price. No, we actually increased the subscription price and then we've absorbed the pricing for like that little um the physical unit for it into the pricing. So now you get this free um you know physical piece and you get this like it's like tangible right you can hold it in your hands like oh my god they're giving this away for free on an annual subscription so now people are joyous so they're like hey let's sign up for this and that's it's just flipping the script on the messaging and really talking about offer optimization which is, i think is probably like a perfect lead-in for what you want to talk about today which is hey for you know b2c markets how can they you know really stand out and how can they tweak their offer so they can turn it into a no-brainer offer that everyone wants to say yes to Dude, that's amazing. I think we're talking about strategies here, but then there's underlying principles about like offer and other things there. So yeah, that that just like blew my mind. I reckon we could have chat, chat about that strategy for half an hour, but I want to get to the, the meat and potatoes now. So like what are the biggest mistakes you're seeing with lead generation businesses in the B2C space, especially when you're running like expensive high intent traffic? Like 
we've worked on multiple accounts together where I'm spending lots of money and I'm driving to like a, an old website and then they've ended up getting a landing page. But what are the issues you're seeing with most businesses that are lead generation B to C? Sometimes they give away too much information, right? Like um, I remember I was working with sort of like a modular home builder back in the day and they had pricing on their website, right? And, you know, they were selling these modular homes and the pricing on this like pricing PDF that you could just access without like, you know, it was not, nothing was gated. You didn't have to put in like a name or email address. It was like $400,000, $500,000 for like this modular house. So how are you going to understand the tangible value of this house without having to speak with someone, right? Because this is like a high ticket purchase. So what we actually did is we were just did one change to the website and we increased the conversion rate by 500% and had just an inflow of leads by coming through. And yeah, we just took off that pricing table, right? Like took off the pricing PDF because people wanted to get the information. So that's one of like the first sort of um, traps that people can do is I can actually give away too much information on this. Um, and now the next big thing is really just starting to yeah focus on that offer so that would be sort of like the second big thing that people sort of make a mistake on when they're doing like their lead generation right so they focus on like hey you know um have a chat with our sales team no one wakes up in in the morning saying like i cannot wait to speak with the sales team about you know fixing my fence i cannot wait right or you know hey get our free sort of you know fencing style guide and get a hundred dollars off your next lot of work right people will be a lot more inclined to sign up for that and say hey have a, get a quote or something like that so you know, and we've worked a lot on like those, um, say that we'd call them like a tradie campaign or something like that. And everyone's like, hey, get a quote. Or if you sort of see it in the software markets, like get a demo. Not many people want to get a quote or not many people want to get a demo, right? Like they want to, um, you know, you're not making it easy for them to get in touch with you, right? So that's where you need to really tweak it and come in from a place of value. Hey? And that's sort of the main thing that we see with like the, yeah, like offer optimization. You know, people are like, oh, you know, um, you know, increase my conversion rate. And it's like, no, your conversion rate is at 1%. This really isn't working. We're going to need to change the whole offer, right? You get to do conversion rate optimization once you've actually scaled. And I think that's like a big misconception in the actual industry at the moment, right? Like A-B testing, it's amazing because it's so easy to do. Like pretty much every tool now has like A-B testing inbuilt into it. But it's also really, really dangerous because everyone's like, no, we should test that. And they're getting, you know, 100 hits on a website a month or something like that. And they haven't actually figured out their offer yet. And they're, they're just trying to like optimize something that's broken. And you're never going to get if you're optimizing yeah. something that's broken well that's the thing the conversion rate will reflect the offer like mm. if, if even if you're e-commerce if you've got a product that's the competitors are selling for twenty dollars same product and you're selling for a hundred you could tweak the website anyway and it won't sell because there are things that are just not compelling but like especially in the lead generation space for b2c like people are aware of their options they're going to click on four ads yeah. and look at the competitors and if one competitor has a better value offer they might be charging two to three times more. Like I was writing a book on pricing recently and a lot of people can just demand more price because they've just got a better offer. And then a lot of businesses are trying to fix their business with like advertising conversion rate optimization when the offer is just straight up shit. And yeah. I know that's why like for you, it's super natural just to like be like, yeah, just fix your offer. But a lot of people don't think like that. They go, oh no, this is just the way I've done it. So this is the way it should be. It's like, no, your lead generation is a reflection of like your offer and your offer is a reflection of like your business. So like you shift that and your business will change. Now, there's people who say like, you know, oh, but this is what everyone else does. But it's like, okay, well, you'll just keep getting the same results. Like if you'll you're get the coming, same results as everyone. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, if and, you're not happy, like why do you think you're going to get better results by doing the same thing? Yeah. Yeah, totally. And it's, we have a lot of different processes, as you know, my co-founder, Alicia, loves her frameworks and everything like that. So we've got some guided frameworks around, um, you know, what it matters to actually create a really good offer. And really good marketing comes down to this, right? The target market that you're serving, you're serving uh, that, that you're serving, and then you've got your message, right? How you're actually going to attract them and that sort of, you know, when, what ad are we going to put in front of them? And then once we've got their attention, what offer are now we going to put towards them to get them to convert? So those are like the three core pillars that we are always focusing on when we're creating our offers. And one of our frameworks and processes is called the Golden Hippo Offer, right? And we call it that because A, it's named after one of our favorite direct response brands in the world called Golden Hippo. But the other reason why we've called it that is like, there's just a sea of gray out there. Everyone just looks at their competitors. They look at their pricing. They look at their offer and just sort of copy that. And you've just got like this really murky, um, just all these gray hippos out there. And what you want to be is a golden hippo that truly stands out. And you do that with your offer. And when you've got a really good offer, it makes your messaging easier and it makes it easier to, to attract your target market. 
So just I'm putting you on the spot here. Do you have any offers that you've done recently or even over the years that just by tweaking the offer, you've seen it significantly change the business? Like an example, top of mind? Yeah, so like a startup in the home space. Um, in terms of like the offer, we're going after first home buyers. And, you know, first home buyers, you see all these, you know, you get $20,000 off. Um, like there's sort of, you know, like there's one-time promotion offers if you sign up for July and August. And um, what we've done is actually, instead of going just for those in-market leads, we've just taken a step back in the buying process. And we've said, hey, just get an info session to figure out how you can get a home in the next six months, even if you've got a $0 deposit right now. So it's a 15 minute info session. We just had all these people raise their hands, right? Because people didn't want to get hard closed and like get $20,000 off or get a free plasma TV if you sign up. And they actually wanted to get the info session. And this was a business that, had um, they had like building experience, but they had like no reputation. It was essentially a startup, and within zero to eighteen months, they'd made twelve million dollars in new home builds um, over in Perth. So that's just like an example of creating a really like polarizing offer and really giving the market what it wants. And that's what a good offer will do, right? It will show them how to get their dream outcome as fast as possible. Hey guys, hope you're enjoying the video today, guys. If you are, make sure you like and subscribe so you never miss a video and update from me. And also head over to mattsfreebook.com. I've just completed my new book called Black Box Persuasion, seven advanced persuasion triggers to get more marketing response for your business and from your marketing. So check it out at mattsfreebook.com. Enjoy the video. Yeah, that's amazing. I think it also fits in towards the different stages of the funnel where a lot of people are focusing on just buying intent traffic, or even if any traffic comes to the website, they've got an offer like that's aligned with a buying intent person, but most people are not in buying yeah. intent. They're in research or education. And yeah, yeah. with this, it kind of nails one, the education piece that even if they've got a high intent and they're ready to buy now, one, it shows you're trustworthy because you're putting out information and not trying to sell. Two, the people who are wanting to buy will just hit you up anyway. And then like three, you're just educating people. So when the time comes that they are ready to buy, they're, the trust is there and they're ready to go through, which is really good you said that because that, that's like another, it's like a lot of people look in the funnel, like, but there's also like different layers to it as well. And I think that you just mentioned there, like taking a step back, you can actually be like multiple steps forward because there's actually got to be more people in that uh, research and education phase that, you know, they might be ready to buy next week, but not today. But if yeah, you serve 100%. them an offer that was about today, then they wouldn't have been interested because people aren't going to remember your brand anyway. They're going to like, if they click on an ad and go, that's a good offer. And then next week, they're not going to go on oh, Matt's business. They're going to go like, just Google again and just see whatever comes up. So um, that was really yeah. valuable. Thanks for sharing that. Like, and it's similar to our last video. Like, I'm already learning again and we speak all the time. It's all about having a long-term focus. And unfortunately, like a lot of business builders and a lot of business owners are very short-term, like, okay, we need to get the cash in today. But if you just have a bit of a, like, have a six-month or a 12-month play and start to build these relationships earlier on, you, it's going to pay handsomely in, in the future. And I think the best way to describe this is like an analogy, like department stores, right? We have Meyer and David Jones here. And you go there and you're like, where the hell are all the people that are going to help me buy my jeans today? And there's like literally only ever like one person it's like a checkout chick and like she's just at the cash register there's like a line of eight people that's most business builders and business owners when they're thinking about their marketing they just want to be at the register but meanwhile there's all these people there's like literally hundreds of people in the aisles trying to find their perfect um, pair of jeans and t-shirt and things like that but they're not being served they've got questions and they're not being served and it's much the same in the online marketing space, right? You've got hundreds, thousands of people right there, like right now searching for what you want. And because you don't have like a funnel set up because a funnel is just the buyer's journey, right? People need information. They've got these problems occurring. They don't know how to fix them. If you can meet them where they're at, they're going to naturally gravitate towards your business, get into like the funnel, and then they're going to, you're going to turn them into profit at the end of the day. That's actually quite profound. You say that just because from my own experience, even just like as a, b2c consumer or b2b for like even when i purchase things for my business it's like sometimes like i won't even be on the fence i'll be more off the fence on the side of like not wanting it but when i just chat to someone and get a bit more education i'm like oh, actually you know what i will go with this yeah and I, like that education piece isn't just to push people over the fence it might actually be helping people get up on the fence and they're ready to jump off when they're ready so that's really like i've never thought about it that way and it's interesting because before this call i was telling you like i've had like 
seven emails this morning from people I was chatting to about seven months ago who want to start working with me. And like, I've just been releasing content myself and I haven't been doing it to get anything from it. But you kind of forget like, oh yeah, when you kind of, not front load, but do the work over time, like people will kind of come, like I could be going direct, like who needs Google ads right now? But there's, I'm up against all these yeah. other agencies and everyone else. But now the fact that I've built these relationships, built trust, people are just like directly messaging me going this, like they're not hitting up other agencies. So that's a perfect example of like, that's more B2B, but like it's the same with the B2C market as well. Yeah, it's people looking for information and there's like just thousands and thousands of people out there with a problem right now. They just don't know you exist, so they can never come. So like meet them where they're at and then they'll gravitate towards you. And it's actually for business if you want to be economical it's cheaper that way like the traffic's not as expensive and the competition isn't as aggressive and that way you know like you've got to have that six to twelve month attitude of like i'm willing to um make a, not a loss but just not get that i spent this much this month and made this much made like you kind of focus in more in quarters or six months but then like it does work like when i think about it now i'm thinking about clients i work with i'm like actually that is the way it works better but if you're very like desperate and just need that bottom of the funnel, you're never going to win because there's no value being offered. You're just like value taking. Yeah. And like, just think of like a really large circle, right? Like that's the whole addressable market. Within that circle, there's just like a little bit, right? It might be 5% of the circle is hyperactive. They're going to want to buy in the next week. The other 95%, they're going to buy in the next six weeks, six months, 12 months, right? And it's just like, you know, do you just want 5% of like the pie or do you want the full pie, right? And like get out there and start um, marketing to them. And then obviously, you know, like it does, once you start to go out into that entire market, you do need to start to set up, you know, systems to then nurture people, right? So you might need to set up a simple little email flow to get them coming back. But if you truly want to scale your business, you are going to have to go to a broader market and meet your customer where they're at and build out your funnel. Yeah, beautiful. I feel like we could keep talking about mistakes, but I want to jump into maybe the more practical aspects now. So I know there's on-page aspects and then maybe like there's offer, then there's on-page and then there's uh, like the post lead experience or post like interest experience because people aren't going to um, directly buy. So for B2C, what would you say would be the best way to create an offer? We'll go through offer, then page, and then um, post lead experience. Like, what would you recommend for a business owner who's trying to create an offer? Well, the offer is really what is the dream come true experience for our customer, right? Like, what do they want more than anything else, right? And really starting to understand like their psychographics and then really starting to then think about how quickly can you actually deliver it? Um, because like I view pricing as like a trivial matter. Like most people are happy to pay more if it provides a better solution. Like <laughs> I'm inclined that way. And, you know, ultimately if your customers are price conscious, like they're probably never going to be a good customer anyway. So just try to go for the top of the market. Um, and yeah, really start to think about like, okay, well, what would be that dream come true experience for my customer? Okay. What would be the first thing that they would potentially need? Um, so I think to make it really helpful for the audience, do you have an example of a market where we could just design an offer on the fly? Uh, what's a good B to C? There's a lot of like specialty fields that kind of like people are like for a dentist or a doctor that they know they'll pay a premium. So that doesn't matter. Maybe like, well, maybe just like a home buyer or like someone who's doing home, like home be, buying or home buying advice. I think dentistry. Dentistry is really competitive. So let's do that. Yeah. Okay. Let's yeah. go with that. So what would be a sick offer? Like a lot of them are just like, uh, call and get your booking now. Like it's just like, it's pretty much standard where they expect the sale immediately. Like if you've got a new dentist, for example, um, yep. they're started up like, yeah, they're going to get clients, but they just want to get more clients and they're happy just to like offer more value on the front end. Like what would you recommend? Yeah. So first thing to do is go type in um, dentist near me into Google, right? And just have a look at what the competition are doing. Because the thing with like, say, like local area marketing um, and say in the dentistry space is right, like you've, you've got your competition, you know who the players are. So all you need to do is be just a bit better than them. And yeah, they're always just like, call us today or um, make a booking with us today. And it's just like, you know, maybe our offer is something along the lines of, hey, get half price x-rays, right? And um, when you go see a new dentist, you always need to get half price 
price x-rays. So like maybe when they come to the landing page, it's like, hey, don't get stung excess fees on x-rays when you join a new dentist, get half price excess today and also like a 12 point whitening check on your teeth. And that's just the idea of like, okay, they're going to the dentist because there might be an issue with their teeth. So we've got the x-ray to, you know, um, put that at ease. But then they're also giving them the dream benefit of having like a really healthy and glowing smile. Um, so that would be sort of how I start to think about it. Okay, we've got the dream outcome. And then we've also got, hey, yeah, we've got like this offer for them to engage with. But obviously once they've signed, like once they've come through this offer, we then want to have like a back end offer. So when they've come through for the half price x-ray, oh, hey, do you want to sign up for your next 10 sessions and get one session free? Yeah, of course. So now you've just turned one customer, you've got all the cash up front and then that can fuel more of your marketing. Also, just thinking that a bit of a, a brain insight is something you, know, you can probably turn your weakness into a strength. So like a lot of dentists, like I know for me, if I wanted to get an appointment this week, I'm not getting an appointment. So you could even have the offer as being like, if you don't have many clients, like mm. book an appointment, get an appointment in the next two days. So like you actually have that like opportunity or if like you're a small business, it's like whatever your offer is, is like get your work done this week which yeah. also like plays on the strength of the competitors knowing that you're going to have to wait longer. You're probably going to pay more. Um, yeah. So I just the only thing, on. Yeah, the only thing better than free is fast, right? It's yeah, like, man. That's, that's a huge like, thing for a lot of people now, mm. like convenience. They're used to like the Amazon, the TikTok, like they're very fast dopamine and it's like impatience is real. So like right over price, I'm finding like um, speed of quality service is more important. Yeah, a hundred percent. And it's like, um, you know, it's like piracy, right? You've got piracy and then you've got like um, Spotify has come through the ranks. And it's like people would prefer to just get Spotify because they can just get it instantly, right? They can get their fix instantly. Whereas like, uh, you know, piracy, you might need to get a virus. You need to uh, upload it to the computer, then upload it to the phone, right? It's just like, then it takes like two hours to like listen to one song. So, you know, it's like, yeah, that speed of implementation is really, really important, especially in like the lead generation space. So yeah, if you can cater for that, um, naturally you're going to like gravitate to like the top of the market. That's amazing. Beautiful. Now let's jump on to like the on page experience of being a website or landing page. What would you say are like the quick things if someone could do, uh, like, you know, headlines offer top above the fold? Like what are your things that come to mind immediately that you see most issues, business have issues with that if they just did these three things, you'd be like, boom, amazing. Yeah, it's what I would call the messy middle, right? Like people might come through to a landing page, but then they want to see your Google reviews or something like that. Or they might click on a Facebook ad. They're like, oh, are these guys actually reputable? So what you do need is you need to like, if you're making bold claims, you need to make sure that they check out on the internet. And at the end of the day, you are who Google says you are. So you better have those Google My Business reviews. You better have video testimonials from clients. And if you've got that, naturally, that's going to be a huge win for your landing page. You're going to be getting more conversion rates. And ideally, you just want to like even stop that step from happening, right? Like there's the messy middle. If your page is so good, then you can actually just avoid that whole step of them like, oh, like maybe I'll type it in Google and then they get the three competitor offers. So if you've got like the video um, proof and like the testimonials to back up like the case that you're making. They'll be like, oh, these guys, you know, they've serviced 10,000 local patients in Windsor as a dentist, right? Of course, I'm going to choose them, right? It's a no brainer. Um, so that would be the first one. The next thing that we find is people are just way too timid with their marketing. And if someone was to have a bad experience with your company, what would you do, right? You'd probably refund them. You'd try to make it right. So the way to be really say aggressive with your marketing, but also to like naturally attract customers is to guarantee the work that you do because naturally you'd make it right, but you don't really say that on your landing page. So you've got to really stand by your claims. And like, if you're going to back your service, other people will back your service, right? But if you won't back your service, how could you expect a potential customer to? So having, having guarantees on your page will just naturally increase conversions for your B2C campaigns. Beautiful. That's amazing. And then on the post lead experience, so like, let's just say someone submitted whatever stage of the funnel, like talking about like email marketing or follow-ups, like what are the most, the simplest practical way just to ensure that you've got engagement and follow-up post the lead submission? Yeah. So lead submission, first one is just have like a thank you page and never thank them, congratulate them on like taking the next step. And then just like, um, that's where like buyer's remorse or like, oh, have I actually effed up, right? <laughs> like we want to stop that step from happening. So having that and then also sending a like a follow-up email as soon as they've sort of like applied for that next step. Let's say they've got like booked in there. We we're talking about the dentist appointment. So they've got their half price x-ray and like the, the whitening check. Um, that's all underway. Hey, here's three ways to make the most out of your whitening check. We can't wait to see you, right? And just make them feel warm and 
and invited and then that's just going to make sure that they actually show up right because you know we've been there before where we're like hey yeah like we've got all these leads for you and they're like oh we haven't called the leads or like the leads haven't rocked up and it's a huge huge issue where it's like okay well like did you tell them what the next steps were it's like no it's like well maybe we should be a bit clearer with like what's actually happening next right it might be obvious to you but it's not obvious to the person who's just opted into this so really just making it sure and like sending out that yeah um thank you note here's what happens next in that email we'll just get like better attendance on that next step in your funnel whether it's you know an input in in person visit or making sure that they're home when you rock up to their house if you're an electrician or something like that hey you know you're all booked and just clarifying that next step is really really important no that's really good and whilst that might seem oversimplistic to us like a lot of times one most businesses don't implement it and two like even if they do they just don't keep it they either make it too complicated or just don't simplify it enough so that is wonderful matt so thank you so much these tips are amazing for the b2c uh aspect um of a lead generation but we're going to jump in next at the for our next video for b2b now this is kind of an area that's pretty underserved because a lot of agencies do tend to work with B2C, which we've been talking about. And because the market is so much bigger, there's more consumers and businesses looking for uh, products and, you know, the cost per clicks are more cheaper because it's a, you know, supply and demand. Uh, We're going to go a bit deeper there. So Matt, thank you for all the stunning and amazing knowledge here. Uh, Go and you've got your new PDF coming out, your new book. Please tell us the details quickly. Yes, go to mattsfreebook.com, M-A-T-T-S, freebook.com, and you're going to learn about the seven advanced persuasion triggers that we use at Persuasion Experience. So this is pretty much what we install for every client. We're essentially giving it away for free um, because we're moving more into a teaching model moving forward. So um, yeah, if you're curious to find out more, um, head over to mattsfreebook.com. Excellent. And that link will be below. Uh, Matt's told me it'll be released next week and I'll be releasing this video uh, tomorrow from the day it's been recorded today. So if the link is not there, it means the site is not ready to go and I'm going to be hounding Matt to make sure he's got the best user experience of just having up. So thanks, Matt. I appreciate this. I know everyone will get a lot of really good knowledge and practical steps from it. Um, This is really good for B2C businesses. And now we're going to jump into the B2B aspect.